Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, you know, Madea, we all gone. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, talk, Boss Talk Podcast 101 in Google, and all our platforms will pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, which is very important to a lot of people, jump over to our YouTube channel. And we don't only want your subscription, we need your membership, okay? But, because y'all always see us on the street and be like, how can we support a brand? Should we buy merch? Or should, what, what should we do? This is what you should do. On the, each and every video that we have in the description section, there's a section that says to join our membership. Click that link and it takes you through all the different steps. Say, man, I'm here with a guy today. You don't need the introduction, man. First of all, we up in Los Angeles, man. It's going down, man. We've been invited in, man. Thanks to Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. We out here, man, kicking it, man. And I'm having a great time, man. My boy Glasses Malone is in the building, man. I've been waiting on this one right here. Oh, man, it's all love. What's the deal? Man, I've been waiting on this, man. Thank I'm sorry you, man. it's cold. I'm, I'm apologizing for man, the Los Angeles. Man, we uh, I prefer hey. the cold and the rain, because yeah, y'all had that had rain the going on. Day. Yeah, yeah, no, we had a storm. So I apologize in the van for the weather. You know what I mean? I feel as an official Los Angeles person, it's important to apologize for the weather. If the weather ain't weathering. I don't know what's up. Man, you, know what I'm saying? I, I, you gave me this vinyl, man. What, yeah. What's up? I mean, you don't have, I, everybody don't do this. I yeah. interview, I, we got 3,000 some interviews. I ain't got mm -hmm. none one of these. Yeah, nah, man. Um, when it's official, it's supposed to be on vinyl. That's crazy. I mean, Castle These Nuts is my new album. Um, That's hard, man. Yeah, because when people vinyl. look at vinyl nowadays, they, they think about our vintage. Daughter, but our daughter, she, I remember she started she getting the vinyl, the vinyl thing when she was yeah. 16. She bought her record player and she went and got all of her older, you know, favorite, you know, yeah. albums and stuff like that. And she has started a collection that way. Yeah, I advise all, I advise all people who enjoy music to get a vinyl player. It plays better? Um, it sounds better? It feels better. It feels There's something better. Um, unique about it, and, and the experience changes it completely. You know what I mean? It's not like listening to music on your phone is a lot different than listening to it out of a vinyl player. It's like a mm. piece about it that I really enjoy. My mom, it connects me to my mom. My That's mom exactly is a huge vinyl. She was a big music person, mm -hmm. ton of vinyls, and I just love how it made me feel. It made me feel official as an independent artist at that point. Wow. wow. I want to get into it, man. Are you from Watts? Yeah. Man, that's cold, man. Watts, 7th Street. That's yeah, what I... 7th Street. Man, that's crazy, man. Like, like... Where's Watts? Man, you remember when I got that haircut about five years ago? Uh, you took me to get a haircut. You dropped me off of there I, at, at the at a barbershop. Okay. And we was in Watts. You don't remember okay. that? Is Watts a bad area? It's like the blackest part of L.A. for the most part. But <laughs> really? But technically, yes. I grew up in Compton and Watts. My mom... I grew up in the wrestling farms. My mom owned the house. My dad, they broke up when I was young. So How my mom old? owned the house three or four. I oh, see so you don't remember a So lot I've been stuff. going back mm -hmm. and forth between Compton and Watts my whole life. My dad bought his house on 117th Street, you know what I mean, off Wilmington and Imperial. And my mom kept her house in the wrestling farms. So I kind of mm -hmm. had that experience my whole life. So you didn't feel like, so growing up, because you had a split household, how did that make you feel? I know it seemed like dad was very active in your life because you yeah. say you were going back and forth. Sure. But did you feel the effects of them not being the same in household? I, I think somewhere, you know what I mean? I can't really say completely yes that I, I would be at a register because my dad is like, you know, I, I spent as much time with him as, I don't remember him not being around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, it's like having four parents. You know, I had stepmom, stepdads. Mm -hmm. you no, know, they did a good job of keeping you know responsible adults around, so we could kind of see how it was supposed to go. You got you to get double gifts and stuff like that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's white people. Shit. No. Your, your mother, she ended up going to prison. Yeah, three, four times. Wow. Mm. So my mom went to prison when I was like twelve or thirteen for um, like a federal charge. They was changing money orders from like forty dollars to oh, four thousand yeah. dollars. Wow. So she went to to the feds when I was probably 13, 14, right around 12, somewhere between 12 and 14. And then she went to jail again for drugs when I was around 16. And a couple times in between. And then the last time she died in prison, she had got 20 years. Wow, man. So when she went to prison, were you staying with your daddy at that time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's how Watts became really more mm -hmm. of a centerpiece of everything I was doing once my mom went to prison. Kind of yeah. changed everything. 
Wow, you, you, you like I said, you researching you was fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> I started looking at all the music, everything. You've been in the game. I, I seen what you say, but I just got serious after I think it was the Tupac thing when yeah, you. Tupac but was yeah, yeah, but you was already doing good music and with labels and everything. Man, um, I've been a pro this like my 16th season. You know what I mean? In, the, in the, as a professional, um, but I didn't really know. Like I had some really great people around me. Shout out to. Um, Big Face, Game's older brother. Yeah, you know, he yeah, was yeah. instrumental in my start, my older brother Pooh. But really, Guido the Nose, who was my engineer and producer for my first project, White Lightning, he was, it was his moment. You know what I mean? I was just the MC that was blessed to be around Guido, you know, yeah. AKA DJ GLE. He had already mixed uh, Diddy, you know, okay. Paper Boy song. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. He had been working with Rhythm D. So he had paid his dues, and I was just a benefactor and an articulate enough MC to rap over the stuff and listen to his guidance for my first CD, White Lightning. You know what I mean? And Game's older brother, who had just coached the game, obviously, mm -hmm. into a gold album in his first week. You know what I'm saying? He was actually somebody on the other side making sure I understood what I needed to do as an artist. So I really was the benefactor of really two other people who had paid their dues. Right. And I was just wise enough to listen to them niggas when they were telling me to do something. <laughs> How did you meet Game's older brother? So, uh, let's start. So, <laughs> I know because it's crazy, right? So, I already knew G-Rod because G-Rod from, from Brazil and Wilmington from Cedar Block was a hustler, you know what I mean, from Black Wall Street. Um, but Little Face, a couple other people I knew at that time. But long story short, my brother-in-law's best friend is a guy named Tone from Village Town, Piru. They call him Black Tone. He passed away. Um, he heard I was rapping at a family function. And he wanted me to meet one of his young homeboys. His young homeboys end up being Four Cent or Four Bent from Westside Piru. Okay. And they're running with game and face at this time. Four Cent died. And uh, I went to his house in Westside Piru, you know, in their community. And I was rapping in his back house. And he was kicking all these dope Piru raps. So I'm kicking all the dope crib raps. But I guess he was more tripping that I was doing it when we was over there. And I'm like, it wasn't going to change because we was here. And um, he was like, man, I want you to meet somebody that's important to me. And his reverence for Big Face was like out of this world. Wow. Folks saying rest in peace. So he introduced me to Face, and I played a couple records from Face, and Face liked my get down in the streets and liked my music and started to guide me from there. Mm. Wow. Dylan, when you said game, man, I remember when game was going crazy up here, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was different, bro. Yeah. It was it was. When I first heard this dude, I was like, man, this dude, he was rapping bar after bar after bar. Yeah, he was I nice. didn't really think that, I, I mean, he was really fitting him, but it yeah. was just, he was too West Coast to even fit in. Yeah. Did you feel that? Um, Hell no, I was happy. I know you, you know what I, mean? I, I, I get it. I, I wanted it to work with him and G-Unit because I understood the look that would change, you know, that would present him a completely different look with G-Unit, right? It's like, um, 50 Cent as a songwriter, you know what I mean? G-Unit as a brand was like the last thing that was important to face. Like, it, I mean, excuse me, that was important to Game. It really took Game's career into where it needed to be for him to break through the underground. Um, Four Cent, man, like I, I can't speak about Four enough. People don't talk about Four Cent a lot anymore. But Four Cent, rest in peace, was like one of the... He was detrimental he was, to everything. Yeah, because huh? he was like, the, him and Game was like, they were like the closest out of everybody. And um, he passed away right before the documentary came out, like in wow. 2004. Mm -hmm. But he was the reason I was over there with Face. Like, we, our friendship became really tough, and we was thinking Steve for a while. When I seen you, I was like, man, he's dude been with everybody. I seen you with Dr. Dre. Like, I'm like, that's epic. Like, yeah. this dude, man, like, and you said he told you to be, get serious this about the music. This is how I started rapping seriously. Yeah, I started rapping seriously because um, I, my older brother Pooh, you know, who, who to this day still manages, he manages K-Boy. Um, when I was just starting to kind of get into rap, you know what I mean, and kind of stop selling Sherm and so on and so forth, um, he, his, his old lady and Dre's sister Shamika were best friends. Wow. So that's how that happened. It was just family, you know, random connections. Um, he's like, yo, do you want to meet Dr. Dre? And I'm like, yeah, you know, that'd be cool. Wow. I wasn't even thinking of a record deal or nothing like that. It was just like meeting Dr. Dre. Like, he's from around the way. It's a legend. 
Yeah, right. This, this dude that but made he just, from the community. Yeah, he just from the community. I never looked at, that at time, it like, yeah, they up here. Yeah, like oh, they around there. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, let's go meet them. <laughs> so we go to his mother's house, which is his old house. I think he gave it to his mom's his mansion in Calabasas, and they're cooking for New Year's Eve. You know, so they making black eyed peas, all this soul food. And his mom is a really great She's cook. Going in mm-hmm. on that food, right? So I go over there. We eating, having a good time, and Dre walks in and. We meet and, you know, really, he was a really interesting person. You know what I mean? He was cool as hell. And I think he looked at me like this little street dude. But, you know, I, I genuinely want to believe he was like, okay, this dude is a little special. Like, he talked a little well, you know, so forth and so on. So uh, upon a second meeting at a beach party that he recommended we meet him at. What year was this, though? This is 2004. 2004. Yeah, it was all the same time. He still, he was Dr. Dre. Yeah, he was already there. He had already did the, the Pac stuff and everything. And ironically, it's crazy <laughs> because, like, I, I remember at this actual New Year's Eve party, he's on the piano and he's kind of just messing with it. Like, yeah, I'm just learning how to play the piano. And I'm like, wait a minute, this nigga done already did 50 Cent album. This right. is the biggest album in the world. You know I mean, he done already did Eminem, Game, uh-huh. Snoop. Excuse me, excuse me, not Game, Snoop. Snoop. You no, know, Exhibit. Exhibit, yeah. You know what I mean? Easy E, Michelet, he done World Class, it. Wrecking Crew. He done did all this stuff and just learning the piano, <laughs> which is why I'm so, like, pro hip hop. Like, it's that making something out of nothing that oh, represents where we from. So um, I'm sitting down. Anyway, we go to the second time we hanging out with him at a beach party at this Malibu beach house that he has. Um, and I'm playing music for him. You know what I mean? He's, I think he tried to intimidate me. Like, <laughs> no, for real. He was like, you know, I could take it with me or I could play it for the whole party. And my older brother was like, well, you could take it. I said, nah, you can play it for everybody. Like, it, you know, let's yeah, just go. Yeah. So he started playing songs and he found one he loved and he just kept playing it over and over again. And I'll never forget how it felt to impress somebody like him. And he man. was like, man, whatever you're doing, this is what you should be doing right here. This right here. And I, I believed when he said that. He, it hit it hit different, or did it or did it just seem like a just hey? No, nah, it, it, it hit different. You know what so, I mean? Cause people have told you things before. Well, I don't think I was ever starstruck around Drake. That's what I'm saying. I so, don't think that even happened till more recently, as I started to get more into what hip hop the art was, and then now I start realizing how challenging it is what he does. Yeah. You know, at first, it was like, oh, this nigga got the jams. This nigga from around the way, he got some jams. This nigga got all the jams. You know, solid nigga, you know, cool, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at that time, I don't think, I looked at it like, okay, he know what he, I, at least he knows what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. So if he's saying, yo, this is what you should be doing for a living, this is what you should be doing. But over the years, as I've been studying hip hop and all of this stuff, which is why, you know, before we were talking about how people respect what oh, they doing. respect you because you know the game. You've yeah. been studying the history. Now it's different talking to him. Like I just was, you know, talking to him, asking him some questions, and he was trying to get to the bottom of it, but I'm so at the point now, I kind of get what you did. It's like, nigga, like, I just need to be in front of you to talk to you about this. Because this kind of exchange over emails, you're not going to feel what I'm saying. So. <laughs> but it took it took a while, like, and that's why I said I didn't really get serious till probably 2019. I just, I, like I said, man, I, I know it, it, it's a lot of people wish that they had that story to be able to say that Dre spoke on their craft like yeah, that. Yeah. That's heavy, bro. You know, so, from the chronic to all the stuff sure. this guy done done, all, even back to the world class record, whatever. Yeah. He was always doping every element of who he mm-hmm. was when it comes to the music. Well, it's a it's also a burden. Cause it's like you have to prove now why he said this about you. Right. Yeah. It becomes a responsibility. So yeah, I hear people say that. They be like, Oh man, Dre gave you props or Jay Z thought he was dope and tried to sign you. Now it's a burden. Wait a minute, you say Jay Z tried to sign? Like my first deal. Yeah, like really? Sign off but it pushes deal. you, though. It pushes you. You say it's a burden, but to me, it makes you step up your game and continually step up your game. Yeah, but that's where it becomes like, so now you have to win. Right. Like, you have to show everybody else this, these, you know, why did Birdman sign me? Why did yeah. 10 sign me? Why is Lil Wayne talking about me? Why is Alonzo talking about me? Why is Dr. Dre saying I should be doing this? Why is Jay-Z trying to sign this? I want to go to that Jay-Z thing. I really want to know the details of that. Now you have to prove it to the general public. To the general public, yeah. Now this is where I kind of been in that space of trying to figure out of how to, okay, what do they see and how do I convey it over and over again in each song? Did wow. you see that in you? Because no. sometimes, yeah, I was about to say, because sometimes. I was going to be done, man. Like, I wasn't <laughs> even looking at it. To me, it was a robbery. 
Now, Steel is, you know, Steel is my big brother and my manager. He's in another room. He'll tell you I was trying to buy a job as a longshoreman when I got my record deal. Mm. I had no plans to rap past 2010 or 11. Okay, how did Jay-Z reach out to you? You on the West Coast. Sure. You know, I know... What year was this? This is 2005, 6. 2005, five, six. You, yeah. you had, it was something special going on with you. So White Lightning, the way we worked it, the CD, you know what I mean? We made sure everybody had the album, and it kind of just resonated real well with people who heard it. That specific story is more a reflection of Chili and Lupe Fiasco. Okay. Chill, who just got out of prison, you know, fighting all, you know, doing time for hustling and whatnot, and Lupe Fiasco, everybody know who Lupe mm -hmm. is. Um, they got my CD. And they were bumping it, and they thought it was great, right? They was like, man, this CD is really, really good. And Lupe Fiasco and Chill from 1st and 15th passed my CD to Jay-Z. Oh. That's what happened. And so as Jay-Z started checking the buzz, he was like, oh, people know this dude. And so he flew me out to New York, and at that time he was the president of, or the vice president of Def, Def Jam. Jam. Mm -hmm. and he sat down, talked to us, took us to eat, took us to the office, talked to us on the curve outside. And that was another thing that was really Dope that I remember. Wow, he took and why didn't to you sign? The money is the money. Yeah, but but the, the fact that you're having that conversation with Jay Z mm -hmm. and just basically him taking interest in you to spend that time to have that story is another thing that's just you know you don't think these things happen. It don't happen every day either. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's valuable to me just for as far as an artist, and I could see why you would be like, man. I got to make this happen. You know what I mean? Man, we still here, you know, 16 seasons mm -hmm. in. And I'm like, yo, I need to make sure I show everybody what Jay-Z saw. You know, That's what real. Uh, Dr. Dre saw. Yeah. Um, and that becomes the goal, you know, proving your the, the legends, the predecessors correct. You see, I'm from the South. Yeah. So you see Birdman and them come into the picture. You know what I mean? They start to hang out. You guys start to, you know, mer you know, hang, do songs together. You see you, you see Compton Menace doing stuff with Birdman. You see Wayne and them hanging up here. You see the, the, you know, the different, you know, the the, the gang lingo, whatever. Mm -hmm. You start to see them speak on that. Like, sure. give me an understanding of how you guys all came together. Well, culture is some shit. I mean, but as far as how we came, it was through Mac Ten. Damn Mac show was, was Mac Ten. Yeah, Mac Ten. I remember funny. them. Yeah, Mac Ten is one of them guys whose ears to the streets had a great relationship with Cash Money he this did. whole time. So when we decided we were going to do business, you know what I mean? That was somebody he wanted to partner with mm -hmm. and do business. So he took my music to Birdman and Wayne and Slim. But you and Mac Ten, how do you guys link up? So the thing about being in L.A., man, is, you know, you kind of from the outside looking in. Yeah, because I'm on the outside looking in. Yeah, from the outside <laughs> looking in, it's like Crips and Blood, but in real life, it's players and suckers. Yeah. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah, it ain't really Crips and Blood. Like, it's players and suckers. Explain. So players fuck with each other. It don't matter if a nigga rag is burgundy, red, black, you know, whatever, brown. It don't matter. Players fuck with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the nuance that people don't talk about when it comes to street life in L.A. Yeah. You don't think some bandana or street sign separates you. Nah, players and suckers been fucking with each other. Wow. So I've been a player. Mac been a player. So my music reached to him, and it wasn't no thing. Once he, val like he validated that I was a player, he started conversating, and we started building a relationship from there that goes to this day. Wow. Mac 10, man, he had a hell of a run, too. Yeah. People don't, during that time when he was... It, I remember he was dating the, the girl from TLC. It was a going down. Like, you you didn't turn, we didn't have Instagram like now. We didn't have the, the social media. It was, you see these folks yeah, on tabloids. TV. You might see them on TV or on magazine. Papers, you know right. what I'm saying? It had to be the magazine. <laughs> Magazines. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when you think about it, man, being a guy that come from that era and then to see everything now where people are trying to deal with it on an independent level. I just had little Kiki on the show. Mm -hmm. And it was Shout like, Kiki. yeah, yeah man, that's my I'm boy right there, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so. <laughs> so, so being able to understand how to move like you're supposed to in this in this environment, being able to understand meaning the music, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. From where it used to be, where a big label would pick you up, and they still do sometimes. But how do you how do you look at it now versus the way it was then? It's a really good question. Um, it's definitely more of a responsibility. Um, because of the way people consume content. Correct. Right. So, you know, people want content a lot more often. Like, I have to post on Insta. Like, this was probably the first day in about 120 days that I didn't post. Like, uh -huh. I've been posting two to three times, at least one time every day. I feel day that. 
since I started the, the campaign for Cancel These Nuts back in October. Um, it is a huge responsibility to make content. But something that has been bothering me is that um, there's a confusion in hip hop where everybody feels like hip hop is now a popularity contest. Okay. So people are making content that doesn't fit what being a hip hop artist is. They're just doing anything. And it don't necessarily translate into people deciding they're going to support your music or buy your music or even your brand is hip hop. Like, you know what I mean? They're not supporting it. And, you know, we have to kind of straighten that part back out. Um, so it is a huge responsibility coming from that era where if I go do one thing for the source, you know, that pretty much covered 200,000 people. I didn't have to yeah. do shit yeah. for, mm -hmm. you know, nine months. <laughs> You know what I mean? You get a fucking article on the source. People are talking to you about that article for six to nine months. That's right. right. Versus today where, you know, it's hard to make content, you know, or ideas that last longer than a week. But it, I totally agree. It definitely is. But I totally agree with you on um, the way in which a lot of artists or a lot of people are doing. They're more of a digital or content creator more than just an artist. Because, yeah. But it's, um, I think it's the way how people... It, when an artist come out and they just do something that's totally different from what their artistry is, but they get all these views and eyes on them, it's like a way where they're like, okay, I'm going to start promoting my music this way because I have all these eyes on me. So although it doesn't relate to music, because they have the audience watching, they can sort of try to push their music. Yeah, but it's, it's really like a bad idea. It's a long way that's not really wise. Mm. Um, imagine a comic, you know, is a reverend in a church. Mm-hmm. And he's like posting a sermon, but he's a comic. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, this is not showing that you're funny. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, we're watching you deliver a sermon, but there's no jokes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care how many more views it get. It doesn't help your brand of being a comic at all. Mm. And it also puts labels in a weird position because if we're all just chasing popularity and then we just buying a song, then they need to go. That's why they're going to get popular people and allowing them just to make songs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to get developed, you know, hip hop artists or music artists to make music anymore. It's like, no, I'll just get a popular person and give them a great song. That's yeah. why I keep hearing people yeah. say that um, whereas the artistry is their concern is not, um, what should I say? It's not talent anymore. It's all about what can you do. And some of it is propped to up, To be too. seen. Prop up, some, prop up is something else. You got a lot of fake bots. You got all kind of scheming ways that things are being manipulated to get people to look at certain things a certain way. Some of it's organic. It's a lot going on. Well, I mean, listen, if everybody just, if the goal is just to be popular, then people are doing what they're supposed to do. But mm -hmm. if you want to be a hip-hop artist or a rapper in 2024, your goal should be to actually sell records right your goal should be to be respected as in your prof you know professional field mm -hmm. you know what i mean if you're a doctor i don't give a fuck how well you golf i mean it could that's get real. you patients but i'd probably be better if you figure out a way to promote your medical practice that's real but then look at um example sexy red everybody been talking about how sexy crazy red. you know the baby that, now. yeah and back out there doing a whole bunch <laughs> but it, <laughs> she the back, thing, she yeah. back. but it, you know but i'm sure that she's streaming and they're looking at her music as much as all the crazy antics that she does well the antics is still wrapped in music you know what i mean and this is the thing about hip-hop and, and i've been having this conversation so if you've been looking up my mm -hmm. content i've been having this conversation about hip-hop Hip hop is street urban culture personified through the arts. Exactly. Nobody understands this right now better than Sexy Red. <laughs> she is a street urban culture. She's a phenom as what we think of certain girls in certain communities. And she knows how to magnify it at the highest level. And then she makes the soundtrack, the score for it. Mm -hmm. So it's brilliant. You know what I mean? And that's why she's doing so well. She is street urban culture personified through the arts. Now, we could be hypercritical over the art itself, but it's more than passable enough. You know what I mean? It wow. is Tay Keith making the music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is some really good people helping her write the songs. It's, this is not like playing. They're not playing. She's not just walking in the bathroom coming up with this shit. It's some brilliant people You're involved. saying it's strategic. So even if, if she's just more you know, responsible for the culture itself, she delivers her part and okay. it works out for her. Got you know it. what I mean? But again, 
you still got to look at the art and then you'll realize she doesn't have a top 40 song mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with all yes. of this attention and all yes. this buzz, because she still has work to do with the art. With the art. I mean, she got the song with Drake. That's doing well, but Drake is a brilliant artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think Sexy Red is in a position to do something great. You know what I mean? If she takes the art serious, her culture just bleeds through everything about what she represents exactly. and the people she represents. They have aligned themselves with her. And, you know, we fuck with her as somebody from the streets that's doing her thing. So it's about can she get the art correct? And really take that next step. And there's, a, I saw a TikTok video the other day of a, um, this guy. He was talking about how okay, because you had hip hop, but then a lot of it, it like evolved into like gangster rap and stuff like that. And he was like, gangster rap has killed so many rappers. It's caused so, so many bad things to the culture. Mm. Um, do you agree with that? Not at all. Um, especially I said that um, it was somebody I really love from New York, a legend. Um, so I, I had an epiphany, right? This is through my studies. Hip hop is a seed, right? And mm -hmm. it depends on which soil you plant it in throughout you know, America at this point we're talking about. It also determines how the culture is gonna come out. So the lingo, if you plant that same seed that, that the Bronx fellas develop, I mean, if you plant that seed in Harlem, it's different than the Bronx. Right. If you plant that seed in Brooklyn, it's different than the Bronx. If you plant that seed in Queens, it's different than the Bronx. If you plant that seed of expression in Staten Island, it's different than the Bronx. So you know it's different if you plant it in Long Beach, Compton, or Watts. It's different if you plant it in Houston and Dallas. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's going to look a little different depending on where you're at because the streets look a little different. Mm -hmm. um, as, but far I think as, that it, as far as it being to blame, that's right. just irresponsible because it's like, hip hop is the mirror of, of the streets at that time. It's a mm -hmm. mirror. So it's like Sam, somebody saying this mirror makes me look ugly. It's this mirror's fault that I'm ugly. Like it's like, oh, you know what? It's hip hop. It's gangster rap's fault because people were already. The music is only the the culture or is the, a mirror of what's going on out there. It's in only the birth because this exists. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dre didn't start low riding, so he didn't make it excel any more than what it really was. No, it just put everybody else on notice. Mm. Everybody else could see what was happening in L.A. for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, how brothers in Dallas might start to identify with brothers in L.A. and say, you know what, that's, we, we, we want to organize like exactly. that. But rest assured, Dallas, this is not the beginning of Dallas in crime. Wow. No. Like, colors is not the beginning of Dallas and crime. No. Motherfuckers been getting shot in Dallas. I keep telling yeah. people that. So how they organize themselves. It's everywhere. Could be more or less, oh, we didn't know this is how brothers over here was organizing mm -hmm. themselves. We like that, so we're going to organize it our way. But guess what? If you plant that seed there, it's still going to look a little different than it does in L.A. But you didn't see when music started, when rap started or um, hip hop started, you didn't see as much back then where the feds and everybody was looking at your music and taking information out your music to incarcerate some of these people. It wasn't as much music and it wasn't as much technology. Well, and also it's black people. <laughs> I've been, you know, all these charges were for the mafia. You know what I mean? Even all those regal fed charges was for the mafia. And of course, black people gonna get the worst end of the stick. They might have took down three different or four different organizations, but when it comes to black people, they gonna take down four hundred thousand. So, I mean, anything in this country used to hurt white people, you could bet for sure, black people gonna feel it worse. Let me mm -hmm. say this, man: Tupac Must Die was a thing where some people looked at it like. What is he doing? Sure. You know what I mean? Including Dr. Dre. Sure. You came up with this. I felt it because it was just history being recapped. Sure. It, it was really a thing where you guys probably seen it from a whole. We was it was conspiracy theories, all type of sure. stuff out there. It yeah. wasn't just what you yeah. you painted yeah. a picture sure. that was pretty much simplified. Simplified, kind of to Keefe D's statements a little bit. To be honest with you, you know what I mean, like. What gave you the? Are you a Tupac fan? Sure. I don't mm -hmm. think there's a black person. I was about to say, who is it? But did you? You didn't hear the song. You didn't see the, what was going on in the video. See, she don't check the music. Well, I don't. I still don't know how. <laughs> you did this video, right? Sure. Talking about you was in a white Cadillac. Sure, sure. You was basically coming through showing Tupac must die because yeah. of some stuff that we know all what happened. Sure. But you did it in a way where it's artistic. Sure. 
I like the song. It was banging and slamming, and you wasn't playing with it. Mm. But it's still like, damn, this Tupac, man. Nobody's, no man is bigger than a program. That's the lesson in it. Like, um, so the more I was learning about hip hop at that time, I started to get into the etymology of the word culture. Like I started looking up what does it mean, aspects, and I started getting into it to, to really get a good grasp on hip hop for what I'm, what I'm doing now. What I, started to, what I started in September and the run I'm about to go on is because how much work I did to understand what hip hop was. And one of the key words outside the street when it comes to hip hop is culture. And the West Coast, Southern California's culture has been on display for 40 years at this point. You know what I mean? Colors is in the is in the late eighties. NWA is in the late eighties. You know what I mean? Boys in the Hood is in the tippy top of the nineties. Nineties, yeah. So you guys have been seeing the shallow surface, right, of our culture for thirty to forty years. You know what we dress like. You know, you know what the street guys look like when it comes to the uniform. You know the kind of cars we drive. You know who we are. So as I started to get into hip hop, I realized like, yo, I needed to figure out other aspects of culture to develop, like to bring y'all to make something to impact, you know, the, the fans of what we do. Mm -hmm. And one of the words that I, f I found was morality. Okay. Mm -hmm. Things that we see as right and wrong. Right. And that's a huge part of any society. Mm -hmm. In Los Angeles, like, like Marv, anybody know, like if you jump on somebody, some probably most likely gonna come back shooting at you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is a standard. This is a standard around here. You know what I mean? And it don't matter who you are. It could be the Pope. The Catholic Church is gonna bury somebody if the Pope and a couple priests jump on one of us. It's just how we believe in justice. So me explaining that through that song and taking somebody who we all revere around the world and saying this person is not even bigger than a program was all a testament to the morality that L.A. feels or Southern California feels when it comes to this street urban culture we talking about. What did Dr. Mm -hmm. Dre, how was this, what was the argument? What did he say? It wasn't no argument. He was talking <laughs> shit. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> he called me up there to talk shit. You know what I mean? But um, he also didn't see it. Okay. You know I mean, he hadn't saw the idea. And when he talked to other people that saw the idea, they was like, nah, that shit is fire. Okay. So even corrupt, corrupt cussed me out. I was going to ask you, like, how was your relationship with the dog panel? Yeah, Daz is my man. They, everybody from the West, I, I revere them. You know, I don't really have no, I never really had no problem with nobody, but this is a whole different conversation. But um, corrupt cussed me out before he saw it. The title itself made people uncomfortable. But again, to me, like, honestly speaking, like, I made the title hella Shakespearean. Because if you jump somebody, nobody going to say that person must die. It's going to come out a little bit more raunchier and fucked mm. up than that. Yeah. So I made the title very, you know, cinematic, like John Tucker must die or Romeo must die. But still, you know, again, Tupac is so revered, it kind of put blinders on everybody and, you know, earplugs. They didn't want to To see kinda, the bigger picture. They didn't want to get the message. But I got time. You know what I mean? Like, time is on my side. You'll... As everybody, every day I look in the comments, somebody's apologizing to me because they was like, I didn't give it a chance. Or I'm hearing different fans saying I didn't give it a chance. And as they saw it, DJ Quick, you know. Yeah, here's another a, one that I see. There was a video on stage with him cussing me out and going bad mm. on me. And then when he saw it, he, he saw me. He was like, hey, you know what? That shit is dope. I'm tripping. Did he wow. apologize yeah, on that was stage? The, that was no, good. on stage? <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but honestly, man, it was such a... I'd be lying if I didn't say I, I didn't enjoy the fact how uncomfortable they are. But did you know all of that was going to happen? You knew that. Yeah, he felt yeah, that. Yeah, you knew it was going to You're an artist. Well, you make hip-hop. When you, when you get a good grasp on what hip-hop is, you know, I knew it was going to be the same thing as fuck the police. Mm. You know what I mean? I knew it would be, you know, great, great hip-hop, you know what I mean? It makes comfortable people uncomfortable, and it makes the uncomfortable people comfortable. Mm. Like you giving them a voice. So people, everybody around here knew what happened. Like, we all knew what happened. Yeah, like, we right did. We did. I just sure. told you that. Yeah. I don't know what the hell going yeah. on. So, I, I'm a Tupac fan. I'm going through a lot at that time, too. And I'm like, man. What is wrong with this nigga? <laughs> I'm, I'm going through it. I'm like, man, what's going 
I didn't really. I'm like, uh, this dude's crazy, man. He tripping, man. No, I get it. No, but it, at the it, end of the day, I hadn't listened to it. I, I wasn't trying. I was tripping because I'm a Tupac no, fan. You go into my yeah. store, you gonna see a big Tupac poster yeah. on the wall. Yeah. I still got. I play <laughs> Tupac music all the time. But again, my job as a hip hop artist is to bring you Southern California street urban culture in all its glory. Already, even in all its pain, and that's a painful moment for us. You know, we do have some moments over here that we not. Necessarily the most proud of on a right. on a positive level, but it is fair. Mm -hmm. This is the consistent theme. Like if if this only happened to Tupac, then maybe I'd look at it completely different. But this happened to my friends. This happened to other people that did shit to us. So it's just the morality of you know Los Angeles street life. This is and we all know it's normal. We like well you know what are we gonna do about it? We gonna trip about it? But we knew this was coming. Did you know? Did you? But did it surprise you when they picked up Keefe D? Uh, yeah, that was really a surprise. You see what I'm saying? Well, because at the end of the day, I, I still need to see the discovery. Like, I don't believe them interviews is what got him locked up. Well, Blad says that, that he, yeah, he's I an know. unbiased journalist. <laughs> well, he, no, he said this is the first one that that he feel like his he gave his stuff over to the you know the authorities and he he helped with the situation to help with it. Mm -hmm. I think that could move you into a space to get like a, a warrant to to raid someone's house. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that could get you in the court. Okay, and then he did a book as well. Yeah, but again, OJ did a book, but they didn't double back. It's just what did, what did OJ say though? He said, I, "If I if I would if did I would have did it, he yeah, was better." What should I say? Quick with his words. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think that that works that way. I mean, I, I need to see because I could be wrong. There's two left shoes, but I'm saying I think there's so much more to what happened, and as we see the case, you know, develop, we'll mm -hmm. figure out exactly where did Nevada you know, come up with enough evidence. Because if it's just interviews, they're going to lose badly. Did you you have a relationship with Keefe D? Yeah, I know him. Okay, My you, mom you was cool. Okay, so you knew him in the neighborhood. My mom lived in their neighborhood for the last time she went to prison. She okay. lived in their neighborhood. Okay, that's, that, okay, that's yeah. what's up. I didn't know that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, I want to move to the Birdman thing again. I'm a sure. big Birdman fan. Man, everybody. Y'all did man. haters, man. What, was it, yeah, yeah, it was haters. Mm -hmm. Haters featured Lil Wayne. Sure. Like, like, how was and Birdman? Sure. How was it doing that 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 video and just going in the studio? Did y'all go in the studio? Cause so me and Birdman was in the studio together, but Wayne played me his when I went in the studio. Okay, let's talk about it. You know, it was like getting your ass kicked. What? <laughs> Explain. Like that's how good Wayne was at rapping. He was cold with it. Yeah, it was like you he hear said his verse. Was. Like, he, he still is. Well, yeah. No, no, we talking about. I'm, I'm back there like, at that yeah. time. Like okay. I'm, I'm in the studio with him. What's crazy you know what is I didn't really realize how. So where did he let was you listen to it at? At the studio. At the studio. But I didn't realize how good he was. Like you know, I'm, 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 I'm older than. Tune. I'm older than Wayne, Correct. so I'm a juvenile fan. Mm -hmm. We came up on yeah, Big Time yeah, and Juvenile yeah. and Jizzle. You know, they done freed Jizzle. These are the dudes I'm listening to. And Hot Boys and Little Wayne is the little brother. This Correct. is the little right. dude. You know, I'm I'm about four years older than Tune, three years older than Tune. So I'm like, okay. So I, I'm hearing his stuff going. I heard Carter one. I'm like, oh, this is dope. But I'm not really giving it its proper respect from a brilliant artist <laughs> until we did that fucking song, and I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? This is how much better he is than I am. And I remember that feeling distinctly. You know what I mean? Like, wow. like oh, yeah, this is fucked up. How, <laughs> but how was Birdman, like, in the studio just awesome. working? You know, because they say he be talking and he just fly with the way he do things, you know? He talk about what he got, what he learned. You know what I'm saying? Man, He's starting and he coming with it. Man, what's crazy is, man, Stunner Man is such a... Like, it bothers me when people have negative things to say about Bird because to me, he's such a good dude. Wow. You, so, so you've heard these things over the years, and you be like, what the? Every time, I'll be like, I don't know who the fuck they talk about because this they don't nigga know. is awesome. Um, he's really, he's a great teacher, first off. Like, he's a really great teacher. He don't mind showing you the game if you want to know it. Um, he was nothing but just brilliant to me. Like, I, all of my modern work ethic, like, for everything that I'm about to obtain and all of the success is because of the work ethic I was taught by Cash Money from Tune, wow. from Wayne, and for, excuse me, from Tune, from Stunner, from Slim, how they work. I mean, that work ethic, that Southern work ethic that them boys had is different. Wow. You know what I mean? And Tune specifically is really, really important on me stepping up as an artist into another realm to where I am now, where it's like, 
you know, when you listen to Cancel These Nuts as an album, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really arranged well because I had to lean on my strengths. You know what I mean? Being around Lil Wayne, like if you're not prepared, Lil Wayne is for sure one of the top five greatest artists Man. in hip hop history. I mean, and he's unbelievable. But when you getting your ass kicked all the time in there and you see how it's done at that level, you know, it's either you going to quit, you know what I mean, or you going to take your shit to another level. Wow. And it took me some time to get it to another level, but here we are now. Did, what about uh, BG? How do you feel like he's doing since he come home, man? Mm-hmm. After, after what, about 13 years, 12 yeah. years? He still sound like Jizzle. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he dead, I'm waiting on it. You waiting on it? Yeah, I'm waiting on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I take, listen, nobody ever told the people that I grew up listening to to stop rapping. Yeah, yeah. And nobody told Scarface to put the microphone down. Nobody told Jay-Z. Nas the only one who got understands. Nobody said put the mic down. So I still want to hear Juvenile. I still want to hear BG. I, and I really want to hear them over Manny Fresh Beats. I really don't even want to hear them ask you over about, nobody else. I shit. was gonna ask you about that, like dealing with you. You you see both sides. Like you dealt with the Manny Fresh Beats, right? Sure, you dealt with one. Dr. Dre. Yeah. You know, like you you know these sounds and stuff. How what do you think about Manny Fresh? Like when you look at his skill level versus yeah, he's no, really, you know, he's, that's another one. Like I'm not throwing these words around. He's another one that's really incredible. You know what I mean? People don't look at his career the correct way. I, I heard somebody tell me that. They felt Manny Fresh would have been bigger if he was able to spread his sound. And I'm like, no, that's not what's making him bigger. What's bigger is when you architect a sound that everybody wants. And then you create one of the greatest movements sonically mm-hmm. that ever happened in the history the of hip-hop. Movement. Yeah. Cash Money Records is probably is as great as it get as an independent label. Yeah. And Manny Fresh scored the complete soundtrack for roughly maybe eight years. Mm-hmm. He was cold with it, man. All them different times, them phases, it's crazy when you look at Cash Money, yeah. Young Money, and that whole movement, the re, uh, Rich Gang, the development of how they did that. Yeah. You don't really see that. Your well, man as a teacher is underrated, and that's why you get the Young Money, Cash Money. That's why you get the Rich Gang movement, because Birdman really... He knows how to motivate. Like he, he would be like a great boxing coach, like like Derrick James or something. You yeah. Know what I'm where he knows how to take a fighter specifically and cater to their strengths. Wow. Like to me, he did certain things to help me understand. Like he always told me exactly what I needed, and when I figured out how to get it, he, you know, I knew he was right. Um, Super Sport featuring Too Short. How did you put that together? Uh, fucking with my homeboy Pun. You got the old short back. You yeah, didn't. You didn't. Yeah. You. I, I, I'm a short fan. Yeah. You, you didn't just get too short. You got the old too short. Right. He even said, "Bitch!" Like yeah. he went in on that old. It was right up his alley. Yeah, it, he, it, was, it was made for him too. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, again, paying homage to Ice Cube with the chorus. Yeah, but really just putting short in a place to where he's always been brilliant for 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you put short where he goes, and you can't go wrong. It's mm-hmm. just when you start gambling with. Short, you know, it's like trying to get McDonald's to make fried chicken. It might not be good, but if it's just like a, a burger, you probably gonna have something that the world want to eat. How did you like, like, like when you first heard Short? What what was that like? My mom being on the West Coast, you know. My mom, man, my mom was playing Short for me first. Wow. I mean, it sounded like it's something I wasn't supposed to listen to, but she was playing it, so <laughs> that's like part of living. I don't remember a world without Short. That's you no, yeah. Cause see, we older. Yeah, I'm yeah. be honest with you. I remember in high school, and and this is crazy. Like when I heard short, it was something totally different. I was listening short in elementary. You know what I'm in saying? Elementary, in elementary. So Think I don't even it. remember a world without short. Like as long as I can remember music, I pretty much remember too short. Too short, cold, bro. and to this day. To this mm-hmm. day, yeah. and still gonna get on that mic and act bad. Yeah, yeah, man. We was talking about it the other day. Sounds like ghetto and how great of a, you know, MC hip hop artist he is that people don't really get. They don't hear all this stuff with substance early on in his career where he would talk about mm-hmm. great things. And he's like another teacher that I don't really talk about. You know, Ice T, two That's short boy, guys Ice-T. who I could call and and get the information of different times and the culture and what was happening and how to approach ideas. So Too Short has been instrumental too. And you could tell it takes him down like memory lane to remember some of this stuff. So he's been great. The, uh, the song, I want to go into the video aspect of it. Like when you guys did that video together, sure. how, where was that at? And, and what did you, you know, was how did all over Los Angeles. That okay. was at uh, a couple body shops and I'm, I street race. Okay. Like uh, again, like I said, LA ain't really 
as much as it seems like it's Crips and Bloods and that's kind of the shallow approach, it's really players and suckers. Okay. So players meet at different places and I'm a huge street racing proponent. I've been street racing my whole life. That's wow. me and my dad's, you know, pastime, real street racing. Yeah. So to be able to include that in the video was dope. That's hard, man. I enjoyed it. I watched it over and over again yeah. when I started doing yeah. my research. I was like, yeah. what? This, yeah. what? this it's man, dope too. This, it's yeah. real life. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I love when I research and I interview somebody and you start dealing with all elements of the game. You one of those guys for me that interviewing you is easy because I get to go both ways. You know what I'm saying? Sure. All, you, you, you really one of those guys that do your homework but have been in the game long enough to where I can reach back in that history, you know? Yeah. So, how important is it as an artist to really reach back, just like what you were talking about, reaching back and hearing those conversations from the older music um, rappers and stuff like that and hearing the culture? Because a lot of these youngsters, they don't reach back to the older, the OGs to really, you know, get guidance and stuff like that and hear about the stories. Um, I think that's why they're struggling. I think this is why hip hop is struggling. I think hip hop is kind of like, you know, there's an arrogance and, and a, a sense of entitlement just based off of uh, youth that mm -hmm. you're going to be able to carry this. And maybe you look at people that were young that carried it before, but you didn't know the relationship with them and, you know, the people that inspired their movement. Like, right. most people don't know the first Death Row album, you know what I mean? That came out of Solar, you know, where Solar Studios, Sounds of Los Angeles Recording Studios with Dick Griffey, you know, who had the whispers, who had the deal. Mm. The deal is L.A. Reed and Babyface oh, started yeah. their career. Right. Shal Shalimar, you know, all these really great talents Dick Griffey had been putting on for 10 years mm -hmm. plus, you know what I mean? And they were able to go in the studio and record their first album with the ear of Dick Griffey there. Even the deep cover look came mm -hmm. from Dick Griffey at Solar. You know, and you listen to the chronic or you listen to Doggy Style and you hear the dramatics is on it. You hear you don't know the musicians that played on it from the past. There was mm -hmm. always this connection for the more successful acts with, you know, the lineage of black music. Mm -hmm. So wow. I think it's everything to have it. Like I think without it, you know, you're gonna just you'll never be able to repeat what you do. I love it. I, I really mean, do. You might get that. lucky, mm -hmm. but you ain't gonna be able to repeat the, it. The, the low the low what was that song? You had a you, you had a song where you sampled between the sheets. You know, I'm old school. Yeah, the low. Yeah, hey, listen. That's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 you had that I'm talking about that song, the way you did it. Yeah. I was like, man, I thought about Biggie, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. I thought about the Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. I thought about UGK cramping my style. Yeah, you fact. know what I'm saying? Like, Thanks. it's a lot like, of I stuff like going on. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. it's different. Like, yeah. it's like everybody, Chubb a lot of there. people done. Chubb Rock. Man, it's don't Chubb do that, Rock man. It's not playing, bro. It's, it's NWA. Don't do that, man. man. Stop. You got quiet on the set. Ooh. You know what I mean? Rinse, so, yeah. Man, that's hard, man. Like, yeah. like, to go back and get that song and do something with it, you know you got to bring it, yeah. right? That's what I'm thinking about. Like, okay, when you get that, there's a lot of people that tried to sample that song. Some of them I listened to, I like, ah, but you killed that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, what's uh, what was the what's on this on this album right here? What's what's the biggest the the the, the big the thing that you really was trying to get everybody to see? What was I trying to get people to see? To understand, you know, like in this day's environment, this is out. You, this is this is really like like therapy, bro. Yeah, like yeah. you gotta understand. That's yeah. what you, people don't understand. That's why I put the podcast together sure. because we gotta inject something to where we can keep this thing balanced, bro. That's a great point. So when you said like that, the goal was to kind of get masculinity back into a better space in our communities and all the ghettos. Like masculinity is in a really vulnerable space. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, gangsterism is like the ultimate form of masculinity. You know, masculinity being defined as like accountability and problem solving skills, you know, in the community is hella primitive, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and we, we like to talk shit, but it is primitive. You know what I mean? We don't celebrate people who just do unnecessary shit, but we do understand that there is a greater sense of justice going on more times than not. But really just to interject some lead in these niggas' pencils. Man, you know what I'm saying? I, I love like, it. Yeah. We need it, bro. Yeah, we need some with essence, bro. Yeah. Like, like you don't really like people not really get to me. Like I told Lil Kiki, like you see the ones who really putting projects out yeah. versus people just throwing stuff out. You can tell what's yeah. really thought through and put out in a and and pretty much when you lay it out, you like, oh yeah, that's, you get serious about the way you present it. Well, we can't rest on our laurels at this point. Hip hop can't just no longer rest on the greatness of its past. People are demanding it again. You know what I mean? We can't just rest on what, 
you know, Bad Boy and and Wu Tang and Dr. Dre and Death Row and 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 Ruthless and 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 No Limit and Cash Money did in the eighties, nineties, and the two thousands. That day is over. Like we rolled that out like an artist who tours off one hit record. And you know, at first you. You think it's about the whole album, but it's really this one hit record. That's and it. The first year is great, and you doing ten thousand people, and then five years now you're doing three thousand people, but you're putting out music and none of the records. And hip hop is now in a space to where it's like eight hundred people in a room, and you know, it, people are demanding that we step it up, you know, as as a genre as well to to deliver to the rest of the world, like to be worthy of the praise again, like that. We rolled the last great wave, probably, which was the 2000s. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now we're riding, you know, 12 years deep as a complete genre. You know what I mean? It's only, too, it's too many specs now. Yeah. I mean, there's only so many J. Coles. There's only so many Drakes. You know what I mean? There's only so many wise. It's only a handful of great artists versus the 90s and 2000s where they were like boatloads of them. So yeah. we rolled off the highs of hip hop for a good 12 years. And now everybody's like, okay, we over it. What y'all got now? Wow. So it's our job to make sure we show that it's something there still. Wow. I just, like I said, man, I, I be thinking about different things that happen up here. Like the Grammys the other night, you know, like for uh, NWA to receive, you know, for Easy and their mother and all of them was up sure. there. How big was that? I mean, that was huge. Um, I mean, NWA, you know, I'm glad white people finally figuring it out. Shout out to the white folks that's finally figuring <laughs> out that NWA is important and you know in this in this life that we all live. But people like Killer Mike, that was to I me. I was about to bring that up next. Yeah, that kind of that kind of like shocked me. Like what the hell? They didn't let him go up there anyway. Well, you know that. Then they arrested him. I mean, he's a gangster rapper. That's fine. I'm one of the few people that believe as a gangster rapper. You know, if they giving your publicist a hard time getting it, snatch somebody up. <laughs> getting arrested, they never heard hip hop. We're going to sell more records. That's real. You know, this ain't gospel music. You know, this is gangster rap. So Killer Mike makes street rap. And he's a real man. He really from the corner. And he achieved, you know, unheightened. You know, he he's reached, you know, great heights and levels at this point with three Grammys in a row, you feel me? So if he had to snatch a nigga up or two, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And nobody is going to judge him for it. It's Killer Mike. Real His talk. name is Killer Mike. Killer Mike. If all yeah. he did was snatch somebody did, up by their collar, I, I think they made off good. How did you like that project, D? He got three Grammys, You know what's funny? It was worth it. Was it was a sweep. Yeah, and it, and it was rightfully so. It was put together incredibly well. Um, they wanted that. Mike wanted that more than everybody else. He was happy. And I'm glad the Grammys really gave it to somebody who wanted, who really went through what it would take to make a great musical composition from the space that is hip hop. Especially in, in a genre where they stick all the rap in the same place. And some of these people, I don't know, you know, they talking about all kinds of shit. They mashing different things. And Mike just represents the streets. Mm -hmm. That's it. He don't represent nobody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was dope for hip hop to get those three Grammys, man. I enjoyed it, man. That, that whole show was like, man, like far as... It brought back, I thought I had some vibes of the, you remember the Vibe Award when yeah. things just going crazy? Yeah. You remember them, yeah. when Snoop looking in the crowd yeah. when Quince? Yeah. <laughs> like, you remember them days? Hip hop, I'm, man. Hip hop's I'm, something else, man. Man, I'm, I, and, and we need to be something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the only way it's going to work. We, we can't be like the, we can't be Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not going to work for it. They got Taylor Swift. They already, you know, the table already got the coleslaw with the raisins on it. I mean, the potato salad with the raisins on the table. They don't, Need no more unseasoned food. They got enough up there. They need some, you know, you, yeah, you got to watch your blood pressure, but you need some seasoning on the table. Right. And, and, and hip hop and gangster rap has always brought that seasoning. That's true. You know, it's like, imagine a barbecue without no greens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a real barbecue, you know, it ain't no, I have a little pork up there. Let's talk about the title. Council, council these what, what? Council these what? Council these nizzles. Council these what? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what made you come up with that title? Um, I'm a man and I'm going to say what I want to say. You know, I'm not going to have no regards for what nobody else think. You know what I mean, I'm a man and I'm going to say what I want to say and that's it. Like, I don't care what it costs. So, yeah, I hang with like Faison and a lot of people that feel that way. Like, they going to say they ain't for the try to uh, uh, Eddie Griffin. Mm -hmm. Like, it's certain people that ain't compromising and ain't, ain't selling. You know, they Dave ain't. Chappelle. I, Dave Chappelle. Dave yeah. Chappelle. And I it's, love those type of people. They ain't playing. You know? <laughs> well, you need, though. You, the world needs people like us. 
balance. You know, so who's going to talk for you? No. I always say I talk for my barbershop. That's all. Ain't nobody can say this shit. They'll get fired at their job. Somebody is spitting their food. Me, I say it for you. Just come tell me. Already. And, I, and where I'm at now, I feel like such a voice for so many different ghettos. Like, not just even the ghettos of Compton or the ghetto that is Watts or the ghetto that's Los Angeles. I feel like I go to barbershops in Atlanta and people are like, man, Glass, you know what's bothering me? And I'm like a therapist in the community. And I'm like, I'm going to talk, you know, if, it, if I could make it make sense, I'm going to express your frustrations with the mm -hmm. world at that time. Well, CEO Serums, hold on, I wanna, I'm on this album right oh, quick okay, here. Cedric the Entertainer, the yeah. feature, that, that was a feature? No, 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 that was a skit, but that's I just wanted to make sure people wanna, knew who was talking. Talking, okay, yeah. so you always show them the recognition, the yeah. Samuel L. Jackson yeah, yeah. as well? Yeah, same thing. That's hard, man. Now, I don't want people to be like thinking like, you don't know who this is. Yeah, like, yeah, you educating at the same yeah. time. Man, I, I like I said, man, the thing is, the whole project and just going out to see this, to get this, man, I'm valuing this. It's going back in my spot. It's, it's going to be at the spot. We're going to put it where it can be and seen. And I'll make sure when I come out today, I'll bring you on the play, too. Okay. Because okay. I really I, want I, people I to this play Yeah, this is not going to get over. Okay, played. cool. Then I'll bring I'm you a right that you can play. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I don't want you to just have car. We don't just have car. We drive all this shit. All right. <laughs> you have one to sit, but I'm going to make sure I yeah. bring you one to drive. I just want in the store, like, when, it, you know, yeah. when things is happening. But just like in case you get a vinyl, you, you want to put it on. Oh, we, do I we got still got the one? Or did she, what did she do? Did she sell it? I'll go and buy one. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. My daughter, she, she, she had brown now, so we she don't know if she took everything. this or yeah. sold that. She sure. tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A right. hustler, you know what right. I'm talking There you go. I'm going to get some money. Okay. Yeah. So I got to ask this question. I need your definition on it. Um, when somebody say, I make music, compared to when you're saying that I'm a musician, what's the difference between the two? That little lady a little slow. <laughs> 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 that lady a little slow. <laughs> I don't know if she was just trolling or whatnot, but you know, I pray for her because she's just she's special, like especially. Because I, I was reading them comments and somebody said, "Well, a musician is the person that you know plays instruments. It's not actually like a rapper or a singer yeah, or something that's like that." Not true. It's um, not true. It's, it's not true. And and I don't think that was her stance either, though. I don't think I, it was. I think she kept. I don't know what she thought, but again, man. Just a Kiana thing. Yeah. She's somebody to me that don't really represent. She It's like her and Sexy Red almost do the same thing, mm -hmm. but hers is more like, uh, it's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. It's over the top. It's that like, y'all just gotta get used to that. What? Is it's that really a right Yeah, it is. Yeah, right now. I'm thinking it's, it was like a train or something right like that. It's still shaking. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's the first time we done had an earthquake on Boss Talk 101, yeah, God. We go. already know. Welcome to Y'all get, <laughs> get earthquakes a lot. I mean, not a lot, but I've had enough to where it's not like I'm going to jump up and run nowhere. Where you gonna run to? That's what I'm saying. So just let's keep going and <laughs> wow. And I'm from Jamaica, so we get we we have earthquakes as well. But the first thing I'm thinking about is I'm on the eighth floor. Yeah, I'm not even thinking. <laughs> fuck it. If it's time, it's time. It's time. There you go. We're gonna get this work in. They better look this up one year. Yeah. And be like, man, them people was in the middle of the earthquake. <laughs> You know what I'm so. Man, I just want to say, man, thank you, man. How can people get a hold of you? Like, if they're trying to reach I'm out, I'm Googleable. Woo, Google me like my man Fab. Googleable. Google, yeah. yeah, you can Google me. Google but me. But really, I got my own place, thecripstore.com. That's why I sell all of my music. You can buy a CD, cassette, uh, vinyl. You know, a USB cassette. You yeah, know, whatever in the world. And outside of that, just look me up online. Glasses low. You keep it. You keep it tangible, hand to hand. It's I'm a lot of people don't do that. I'm fighting the idea in my mind. How are you in the record business and you don't sell records? How are you in the music business and you don't sell music? Al D three hundred down in Texas. I don't know if you heard of him. You got to look him up. Him and Kiki be together. Sure. Yeah, Mac Ten like yeah, him a lot yeah, too. I know it is. Like he's a hand to hand guy. Like like yeah. you doing this. Yeah. It, you remember he would always he got something. He gonna give you a lighter with the record with the disc. He gonna give you something. And yeah. I think that's dope, bro. Cause a lot of times them kids don't remember when it went from cassette or when it went from eight track to cassette. To, you know, CD back from and vinyl was during, during that eight track time sure. too. So all of this stuff, man, it bring back memories for me. Yeah. But it educates the younger people. Yeah, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. the young, my my some of my son, he don't know. 
Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's 16, right? He don't know. Well, what I tell him is, this allows you to play music and be on the phone. Mm. That's hard. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. That you know, is so true. So, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to have two phones all the time, but if you want to play music and be on the phone, you know, come buy some music from me. Man, hey, man. I got another oh, question. I say it. So, um... In the rap game, because I know in the rap game you have like a lot of beefs and stuff like that. And um, like now, Nikki and uh, Megan going through their thing. Do you, it, do you have to have beef in rap music? You don't have to, but there's nothing wrong with competing. Mm -hmm. you know, um, but how far, it's too far when you take it. Yeah, Is they, there such a thing? They're not going to pinch each other. They're not. Them girls ain't finna fight nobody. <laughs> They not gonna fight. These motherfuckers got some millions of dollars. <laughs> Them motherfuckers finna not do nothing. <laughs> at best, they might throw a shoe or two at each other. They not finna fight. But I, I think I think it's important for female hip hop to start carrying the space. Okay. So I feel like they should battle. I feel like Megan should challenge Nikki for the throne. This is a shot at the, this is a shot at the heavyweight champion. That's mm -hmm. right. Take mm -hmm. your shot. You know, sell your record. It's marketing. You know? Wow. I think a lot of the stuff, even Tupac, you know. Resident Soul, he understood marketing. Yeah. He knew how to market himself into the correct space to, to be the number one artist. That's you know hard. What I mean? So you Nas and Ether, you know, when Nas was struggling, Crazy. Or coming off an album that people was questioned critically, it, it was decent successfully, you know, uh, commercially, but you know, I mean, critically it was slandered and he took the Jay-Z opportunity and launched himself back into another gear in his career. Yeah. Mm, I think yeah. hip hop is something I hear a lot of people say and and LL has, I agree with LL's point. Hip hop is not a sport. Like I know people say that it's not because it's not really driven the same way. But sports are not the only thing competitive. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Art is competitive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, people working at a job. If I work at you know McDonald's and I'm flipping burgers, I want to flip more burgers than you. Be the best. I want to have my shit exactly. So I think there's a space for for Megan. You know what I mean to challenge for the throne. And you gotta jump at it, take a mm -hmm. shot. You, you know, if you shoot for the stars and you land on top of the palm trees, that ain't that bad. You, wow. know, I mean, you gotta go after the, the heavyweight champion giving you a shot, you take a chance. And I see something going around now for some reason. I know everybody's not getting a real tattoo. Cause ever since oh. Krishan Rock <laughs> did, this, did this tattoo of Blueface on her face, I'm seeing all these videos popping up of all these females. And I, I guarantee some of that is henna. Sure. Paint or whatever, sure. but everybody's doing it. That internet. I mean, it's crazy. So, what do you think about people or even fans? You might have a female fan pop up and have a tattoo of you on her face. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Oh no! How you, what would um, your response be on that? Uh, listen, man. I think people are way too vested. I don't think they've figured out that this lady and Blueface and that whole team is entertaining you. Mm -hmm. I think people are over vested in it and they haven't separated the fact that this is most likely entertaining. Mm -hmm. I think everybody wants to make it real. So they want to align themselves with, you know, oh, I don't like how Blueface treats women and Krishan is sad or uh, Krishan is, dead, you know, whatever. It's just like, you know, they're selling something. Mm. You know, this is what they do for a living. But it's taking it, it's like they're taking it like, because we're older, so we didn't see it being taken that far to this extreme. So, sure. It, um, it, it's hard to kind of limit expression and entertainment, that, right? It's, it's weird, was. right? Because it's like, I could, you know, she ain't all the way right either. <laughs> I don't know if, you know, no, I know Blueface will like, cut a big house. <laughs> <laughs> She ain't all the way right. You know, if you listen to her talk, like, like the elevator, it, it might be a 13-story building, but the elevator go to the ninth only. <laughs> so I don't know if I would really be following what, you know, somebody who might, forgive me, like, little mama, I'm not dissing you, but this right. lady ain't all the way there. Right. There's something going on. Yeah, the, the, the driveway She's don't go all the way to the daughter, garage. but mm -hmm. I don't get it. I yeah, don't know the parents. The, the driveway don't go all the way to the garage. There's some one. stuff going crazy with that. Now, like, I, like Suki? Yeah, some of them, the driveway don't go it, to the it's garage. Different. It's, yeah, you got to get out and walk to the garage. It's short. It ain't, it's a couple, about three sodas short of a six pack. <laughs> I got and my last question. Last question. Um, I see some of these young rappers. When I mean young, I mean. 9, 10, oh, 11, yeah, yeah, they coming up, and 
the songs that they're singing and how they're acting, they're acting like grown men and some of the stuff that they're talking well, about. And, the and I'm crazy. like, what being that you're in this business, how do you feel about that? I don't feel that. Who would listen to somebody nine talk like that? And you got people to do it. I'm not mad at the parents, right? If, if you know, because it's acting to some right. degree, right? You like having a nine year old kid actor. I mean, whatever. If that's how movie, who, the real question is, who the fuck is listening to that? At nine, I would not want to hear nobody talking like that at nine. That's I want to see MC Hammer dancing at nine. I was looking down my timeline. I saw this kid. You know, I, I guess it. he's yeah. a musician. He was yeah, talking like about a drill rapper. Or different yeah, yeah, I saw that one too. But this other one, he talked about um, the, the thing was like somebody snatched my chain or something like that. Somebody must have got it. He's like, you think? And he was cussing and going on my chain right here. My, the, this, 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 and whatever. I don't know who. And really I'm like, and he's that. a yeah. and he's a musician. And I'm like, no, nah, that's. I mean, pretty- honestly. I, I'm not bothered by it as much as, you know, people taking they sh- you know, people come up with all kind of crazy food restaurants. Right. I don't mean everybody should stop there and eat. My no. question is for the nigga stopping there and eating. Yeah. Who the fuck is listening? I'm not playing no little nine year old nigga talking crazy in my car. Me neither. I don't give a fuck what he talk about. Mm. I don't give a fuck. The only nine year old I would play in my car was Michael Jackson. I ain't playing no other nigga that's nine in my car. So for sure I'm not playing you nine talking about switches and fucking up and women. Nigga, you nine. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm more worried about, you know, who the fuck would consume that. Mm. Like I wouldn't even follow you at nine or and you talking crazy. I, if you even if you was a kid, I'd be like, I just feel bad for you. you know, but we but who's who's child co- services. coercing it? It's somebody co- That's the sad part Somebody is really Trying to develop him Yeah that grooming way, him. A grow, An older person To be honest with I, I'm, you And I'm that's sure. crazy Well I mean I, I think there is a little A level of You know People seeing rappers And wanting to be rappers And then Here, here goes the conversation Right based off What you're listening to I don't think that's as crazy Because again We have child actors You know It's different my thing is, who the fuck wants to hear that? Nah, you're right. When I was nine, I did not want to hear no nigga my age talk about nothing tough. <laughs> if I was going to listen to some NWA, they talking tough. That's right. NWA came out when I was this 89, I'm nine. Yeah. Right? And mama listened to, what I wanted to see was kid and play dancing. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. I wanted to see was, you know, MC Hammer dancing. Mm-hmm. I would take NWA as a kid talking tough. I don't want to see nobody nine years old talking tough talking and not. Tough. So I don't believe that shit is even worth the comment. Nobody watching that dumb ass no, shit. No, that's real. Everybody, if you look in the comments, it's going to be a bunch of motherfuckers complaining. Yeah. And nobody yeah. in the comments like this shit tight. No, yeah. no. Yeah, I want to ask you something about, like, you see over the years a lot of celebrities come up here and a lot of them fall victim to gun violence or they... Uh, People dying, getting robbed, all kind of stuff. Like the reputation of checking in up here, it's a whole different world from the outside looking in. Like, how do you feel about the whole situation when you look at it? And being from, you know, LA, I, I think it's overstated. I think if you go to any poor ghetto in in the world, in the United States of America, and you got you know a quarter million dollars worth of jewelry on. It's probably a disservice to that community to not remove that from you. Yeah, you you don't really want this. <laughs> you don't really want this. That's real. Why would That's you real. do that? You, know, you go to the jungle where the tigers at with your stakes. You must really don't. You take your ass over. You just don't want to live. That's real. So let alone if you go over in these communities and you wearing what the houses cost on your neck and you think for two seconds you supposed to make it out this shit alive is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. You got to be the craziest motherfucker breathing air because I ain't never in my life thought I was going to go to any ghetto with what looks like enough money to change your life and think I'm going to leave there without somebody trying to change their life. Yeah, It's yeah. not even worth the fight. So I, I think L.A. gets a lot of bad rapport when people are trying to floss around here because people watching you. And flossing is a, is a really bad habit that can be costly. When you look at, like... The crime rate and the way crime is. Even Memphis, Memphis catch it the same way. Hell you yeah. you look, it, it happens in Dallas. You I remember when your first party eight was 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 going on. Every time about all the crime, I'm like, Dallas is getting more mm. happening than anywhere else. Cause this shit's happening in Dallas. So, I think there's a space where rappers are being irresponsible and and they're trying to market themselves off the. The, the shortcomings of other communities is like, oh, you know, I got all the money and I'm going to go over here. Niggas going to respect me so much. They ain't going. Yeah, OK, wait on it. 
Man. Let's see if it work out for you. Why do they call you glasses, Malone? I can't see. I'm blind as shit. <laughs> Context bothering me now. But back, uh, the last part of that question, I didn't want to lose it. Before okay. I got loose. Um, About L.A.? Yeah, it's, it's L.A. And then uh, we were talking about people, like the, the bad stigma in Los Angeles, which is probably overrated. It's Definitely like, a bad stigma. Checking in. Checking in. That's, that's another thing, like, like, bro, you don't, checking in is like fellowshipping. Like, I'm talking to you ahead of time. I'm like, yo, me still, we coming to Dallas next month. Yeah. Man, could you hook me up? I'm check, I'm going to call you. Yeah. That's checking in. For sure. Now, if you come to Los Angeles and you going somewhere over there in Hollywood and you going to a movie premiere, you don't got to call nobody and tell them you here. <laughs> I mean, now I'm not saying there's nothing wrong if you do. But to me, when we say checking in, we talking about fellowshipping with other brothers. Now, if you start to try to take it, now if I try to go to Oak Cliff, some of the worst areas in Oak yeah. Cliff, and shoot a music oh, fucking a video road. over there, yeah, and don't talk to nobody, right? You now you gotta gonna, call somebody. I'm gonna go over there and take advantage of this community and this scenery and all these people pain and trauma. I would expect them to want to tax me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who the fuck would think you're going to go to somebody else's poor ghetto and just go take advantage of somebody else's misfortune and then only all they got and think, you can't even shoot a video. At least the city going to charge you. You got to think about it. That's even true. even when, you, when I, I remember we was in Chicago and I was talking to, uh, mm-hmm. was it Minister Seymour? Minister Seymour. And he was like, man, you come to Chicago, you need to check in. Y'all not going to keep, I, he was talking about the Jews and everybody. Yeah. You're not going to come shoot a movie here and not hire the people from our city. Yeah. You're going to come what here and respect what we're that? doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, don't, I don't get that whole shit from black people where it's like, I saw somebody say white people. There's a man in my comments. I had this conversation before. He was like, you know, Taylor Swift don't got to check in. I'm like, first off, Taylor Swift ain't going nowhere near no trailer park. Mm, not at when all. Taylor Swift took her motherfucking ass to the trailer park. She better fucking check in. She go to the wrong one, motherfucker gonna do something to her. That's real. So again, it's just when these people that are succeeding in life, wealthy, doing well, want to take advantage of these poor places and go monetize the scenery. Keep your ass in Hollywood or Beverly Hills or Bel Air and shoot your video. You ain't gotta pay nobody but the city. That's real. And I bet you gonna check in with their ass. You definitely gonna check in. They showed something like that. I think it was Ice Spice or somebody who went into Bronx the other day to shoot a music video. Lotto. Lotto. Yeah, Yeah, and I'm sure she did. Why would you not? Why would you wanna go in somebody else's community and take it? Who the fuck you think you is? You got to, you got to, because it's your respect. Really? Take your ass. your respect. Take your ass to Bel Air and just go shoot a video in the middle of their streets. Mm -hmm. Your ass going to jail. (laughs) <laughs> you're gonna shut it down, mm-hmm. man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You, we'll man. see you in Dallas. Yes, you gonna be a you gonna be a regular. Yeah. You a boss. T- Listen, y'all got y'all in trouble. Y'all yeah. really and, in trouble. And I got a I'm lot of content listen. to talk about. I got listen, a lot of stuff. Going y'all on. in trouble. You see what's yeah. going on over here? Boss Talk One Hundred and One, man. G Malone, Glass yeah. Malone, however yeah. you want to call it. All that. He on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. He rocking yeah. with us. Yeah. Yeah, it's an honor and a pleasure, my brother. It's all love. love. (laughs) Check it, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys check the uh, the the next clips coming up. It will be glass, all glass Malone. Y'all gotta see them. It's gonna be dope. Store dot com, thecribstore dot com. Buy album. That's it, right there. Hey, man. Thank you. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a boss is talk. And we out.